Thank you, Andrew. Um, <clears throat> this is really more the ARF invariant, uh, one of its applications being used by uh, Rockleen, but only one of them. So there's ARF. This is a sculpture. Yeah, it says that. Sculpture by uh, Langland's, that's Langland's wife. Uh, I'm finished. That's why it's so rare. Yeah, Langland's, Langland's visited uh, Turkey around 67, 68, and got to know uh, ARF quite well. I, uh, this is good. There's, a, there's that little thing over his first name which tells us that it's Jahit ARF. Uh, so I looked him up. He was uh, born in October 11th, 1910, died uh, the 26th of December, uh, 1997. So he lived a nice, ripe 87 years of age. Got his PhD from Hasse and Gertigen in 1938. Stayed there for an extra year at Hasse's request, and that's when he did his work on the ARF invariant, which I'm about to describe. So uh, he's quite a distinguished Turkish mathematician. Uh, ah, yes, the, the, the 10 lira. So if you see, this is the Turkish 10 lira note. Um, and, you know, how many, how many places in the world are you going to find mathematics on a banknote? But that, or it says R of Q. I don't know if you're going to read it, but it says the summation from I going, I going from 1 to N of Q of A sub I times Q of B sub I which is an element of the group of order two, and it's that sum. So I'm going to explain that in just a few minutes. But uh, there it is. You're, you don't have to take notes. You just pull out your 10-layer note. <laughs> uh, pardon? <laughs> That's right. So, uh, so to begin with, uh, I want to explain the. I, you're not allowed to use muscles here. So we're going to start. I, I want to explain this fairly carefully because I'm going to, then going to use it in about four or five different applications in topology. So I really want you to get your hands on what the ARP invariant is measuring. So it's, it's actually quite simple. We've got this uh, uh, V as an is a inner product vector space over the uh, group of order two. Can you read this from way up in the rafters? Okay. So it's it's that, and you should think as an example. This will often be the example, though not always. You should think of the first homology of a surface <coughs> of genus uh, G with z2 coefficients. And so then if we draw this surface, so on, then uh, this is of order, this is uh, of order uh, 2g, it's a 2g dimensional vector space, and the generators, well there's, there's some generators uh, a1, a2, a3, same notation as in the Lyra note, and then one going around here, b1. Uh, there's many generators, as you know, but that's some. And so this is the generators of this vector space over uh, 2. The inner product is just the intersection form, so these two intersect in one point. So there are those generators ai intersect bi is 1. So that's, that's a good example, and you can think about this, keep this in mind all the way through if you want to think geometrically or have a picture of it. So we've got that. Now, the next thing uh, we want is a uh, quadratic form. So we, we have a Q. Q is a map from the vector space to Z mod 2. And it satisfies the property that q of x plus y equals q of x plus q of y plus x dot y, where this is this uh, the inner product I just mentioned. And this has to be true mod 2. So this quadratic form, quadratic enhancement, 
is just a, a function which satisfies this property. And now, given that, we can define the RF invariant right up there. So the RF invariant of Q, I mean, it's not just Q, implicitly V is in the background. So the RF invariant of Q is exactly the sum that you see up there, Q of AI, Q of BI, uh, I going from 1 to, in this case, I, in the case of the surface, going to 1 to G, because there's G pairs of, of generators. And it's this mod 2. Now, the point here is, so, so first of all, let me just state a couple facts. We can always decompose V as a direct sum of copies of uh, what just is in the surface. You can always split along uh, these into just tori. So that's a pair of generators, and another pair of generators, another pair. So in this situation, you can always split this. So you can always write this as a, uh, I guess it's a direct sum of G copies of, and now I'll just draw a set of naming, I'll just put in the intersection form. That's the intersection form for a torus. So you can split it into G of these. This is a vector space of order. This sits on a two-dimensional sub-vector space of V, each one of these. And then Q, Q is either, so there's three non-zero elements. There's a zero element, then as in the picture, there's A1, there's B1, and then there's the 1, 1 curve. That's A1 plus B1. So there's only three elements in this little vector space. So Q is either uh, zero on two elements. So if it's zero on X and Y on each of those, uh, then it's going to be one on X plus Y, because it's zero here, zero here. They intersect and so you get one. So you, it's either zero on two elements and one on one, or uh, it's one on all three non-zero elements. So this is a very simple little thing. Just it's, it takes the values. Uh, Either it's a one on everything, or, or it's, it can't it can't be zero on one element and one on two elements of the non-zero ones. It just doesn't work out from this equation. So you have those two choices, and so in this case, oh, one name for this is that it's the it's the thing H zero zero, and in this case is H one one. That's just sort of a name for these two-dimensional cases. And then it's a it's not. Uh, true. <laughs> All right. Uh, yes, and so then it's, you can show uh, you can show that H one one drag sum with itself <laughs> is uh, then becomes the same as H zero zero. So these, these turn out to be the same. So the whole issue then, given this whole setup, the whole issue, which is the ARF invariant, which is what uh, that formula is me measuring, the whole issue is whether, uh, is whether you have, in this decomposition, you have one of these or you don't have any. Because if you have an even number, you can get rid of them, change them to zeros. So the only the only other possibility. So every every such v with this quadratic uh, enhancement, every one of them is a bunch of zeros, and maybe or maybe not one of these. And that's the Arf invariant. So another way to think about it is the Arf invariant equals one or zero 
depending on whether you have a direct sum of a whole bunch of zero zeros or a direct sum of a bunch of them plus another H11. That's what the R frame. Just just a very simple little object like that. Okay. So now from now on I want to tell you how it's used in topology. So probably the easiest uh the, the first one to mention is just not theory. So, in not theory, uh, so I'm going to start, sort of start with dimension one, a knot, and work up. So, um, so for a knot, well, a knot bounds a ciphered surface. So there's surfaces coming into it already. And so we, for example, might draw a knot. You can draw them, always draw them this way. Since it bounds a surface, here's the disk part of it, and then you add one handles. So we can add some one handles. Right, so there we are. Disc, the pair of one handles attached. And now the generators, you, you know, this is not a closed surface, but we don't care about that last disc that you would that you would add. You still see the one handles here. So now we can take a basis for this. So we'll call this this one A A1, and we'll call this one A2, or B1. And you notice they intersect in a point, just like up there on the surface. And so this is a nice Z mod 2 vector space of rank 2 in this particular case. And then we can ask a further question. What's Q going to be? Well, we want to measure something or other about A1 and B1. Well, the thing to measure is whether there's any twists in these handles. So, for example, the way I've drawn it, there's no twists. But I could have put a twist in. So in this case, Q, Q of A1 is 0 because there's no, no twist in there. But Q of B1 is 1 because you see this twist. Doesn't make a difference whether it's right hand or left handed because we're working mod two. So that's one. And then you can tell from this that uh, you can't have just one zero and two ones, so it must be that Q of A1 plus B1 is is also one. Sorry, also zero. That's what I mean to say. And you can sort of see this because um, but if I draw the well, if I draw this, it goes around like this, and then it goes around like that. If you if you want to go around both of them, and so you not only see the twist here, but you see this extra kink in it. That's what gives the extra the extra one from this point of intersection. So in other words, what you would what we're really doing is calculating. You take the push off of AI. And you calculate the linking number between AI and its push-off, which is obvious, there's obviously no link. You can pull those apart, whereas this one has a linking number one. And here, if you drew the parallel copy, then you get over here and you have to go through this twist. And so now, if you straighten this out, you'll get an extra kink there. You get an extra twist when you straighten this out to a round circle, and that gives you two of them, which is zero mod two. So you just see see the R from very very geometrically in the in the knot here. So if you put on the other hand, if you put a second crossing, a second twist in here, and I'll draw it. So we put in two twists. I'll just denote it by a, a one here. That's a one full twist. Now, both a both of these q of everything is equal to one. A a one h b one and also a one plus b one. 
So they're all equal to 1. So here the Rf invariant is 1. So the Rf invariant of this knot, which as it turns out is a trefoil knot, just drawn in a different way. And the trefoil is usually drawn this way, but you don't see the you don't see the surface as well as if you draw it this way. So anyway, so the Rf invariant of the trefoil knot is one, and so here, of course, this is the un actually the unknot, and so the Rf invariant here was zero. And so for knot for knot theory, this is the most basic invariant of a knot. Uh, it separates the knots into two into two. There's those with Rf invariant zero or Rf invariant one, and it doesn't depend on the surface you choose or. That's, that's an argument, board, a little boardism argument. Uh, yeah, in, independent of all the choices. And so, so the Rf invariant is the simplest and most basic invariant of knots. So that's the one-dimensional case, and there's not a lot more to be said, except that this ties in, as you'll see in a moment, it ties in with the uh, how the Rf invariant turns up in dimension 3. But before that, uh, before I get to dimension 3, I want to talk about dimension 2, where it turns up in spin, spin boardism. So, uh, This is equal to boardism classes, cobordism. Like, when do we say boardism versus cobordism? <laughs> well, uh, I don't know the word boardism, but it's both. Yeah, it's. it's the, the same. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, boardism of spin. Two manifolds. That's what that is. So I want to tell you what spin is. Um, probably everybody's here has heard of, of uh, seen definitions of spin. Uh, it's actually right. spin is kind of tricky, but let me give you a definition which uh, uh, is very nice for certain purposes, not for everything, but for certain purposes. So let me remind you that an orientation. And then I'm going to say the same words for spin. Orientation is a trivialization this is orientation of a bundle of a, of a manifold or is a trivialization uh, over zero skeleton extending over the one skeleton. If that looks a little weird, remember you, you've got your manifold and you've, you put a trivialization here and a trivialization here, and the thing is one of them might be right, one of them might be one way and one the other way, and then they won't extend over an arc between them. So that's, that's the meaning to this. Uh, that's, uh, you don't care how you extend it over the one skeleton, you just have to extend somehow. For example, if you do it here, you could rotate it a full rotation and get this trivialization in the planar case or, or not rotate it. All right, then a spin structure. This is a trivialization over the one skeleton extending over the two skeleton. So it's it's the same same words but just up a dimension. So you're well, as it says, you 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 pick an arc and your manifold, and you have to trivialize the tangent bundle if you can over that over that uh, over that loop, and then it has to extend over any two cells that that are in there. So if you if your loop bounds a two cell, then you can only do this. Whereas if the loop doesn't bound anything, then you might rotate as you go around the loop. So that's kind of the bones distinction. Uh, I remember giving this years, many years ago, and 
Bot was in the audience, and I asked Bot what, it's been, what he thought, what he would give as a definition. He says, oh, it's the square root of the Laplacian. Well, very different <laughs> sort, of, sort of description of the same thing. Uh, and just, just for fun, I'll mention this one, even though I'm not going to say anything about it. But a spin C structure is an almost complex structure, meaning the tangent bundle is a complex manifold. Uh, the almost, uh, we're not saying that the manifold is complex, just that the tangent bundle is complex, which is almost complex. So it's an almost complex structure over the two skeleton extending over the three skeleton. Now that's not the definition hardly anybody uses, but it just falls into this pattern, so I thought I'd mention it. So. That's what a spin structure is. Oops. So, so about this boardism, so now you don't have just the surface. But instead, but you also have a spin structure. So here's, here are our basis elements again, A1 and B1. Well, how do you trivialize the tangent bundle? Well, as I sort of indicated before, as you go around this circle, for example, you can just take a trivialization of these, these two basis vectors and do nothing. Or as you go around the circle, you could keep, you could keep one of them tangent to the circle and go around making a full twist. In mod 2, those are the two choices. And you have those two choices for every one of the circles. Well, naturally enough, uh, from this description, uh, your, your, your Q, Q of, say, A1, is going to equal uh, 0 if no twist, or 1 if a twist. So we get a quadratic enhancement by comparing, well, you can ask, what's, what's the, uh, what does no twist mean? Well, no, you can see what no twist means when I, when I uh, describe it geometrically that way. Uh, but anyway, so there's the quadratic enhancement. And now, uh, so then on this torus, you can, you, you can have any, any of the choices. So if I twist, if I put a twist on both A1 and B1, which, by the way, is, corresponds to the Lie group framing of the tangent bundle. You know, in a Lie group, you can take a framing at one point and then just multiply it around everywhere, give you a framing everywhere. Well, when you multiply around, you're keeping things tangent to the circles. So it twists in both cases. So uh, the Lie group framing gives Q of a1 equal to Q of B1 equal to Q of A1 plus B1, they're all one. So now when we talk about spin boardism, you have to preserve, you have to preserve the spin structure through a boardism. And so then it turns out that uh, this, this is equal to Z mod 2, and the generator generator of that Z mod 2 is the torus with a Lie group framing, with a Lie group trivialization. And if you put two, if you take a connect sum of two tori, then uh, it's just as in uh, the H's here. If you do two of them, then the Arfan variant is back to zero. So this does, this describes uh, omega two spin, and there's a story involved with this. Pontryagin uh, was uh, calculating, working on pi uh, n plus two of S n back in the mid 40s, sometime like that. 
and he first announced that this was zero because he missed the Arfan rate. And then he later corrected it and got Z mod 2, which is correct, and, and he had basically discovered this phenomenon. So how does this go briefly? Well, for this you, you map, you, using the town patriarchal construction, so you, you map the n plus 2 sphere to Sn and take the pre-image of a point and you get a surface back here, some surface of genus G is sort of the pre-image of, uh, of a point. And now, and it's framed because uh, it's framed by, it's, it's got, its normal bundle has an n-dimensional framing. So be, just coming from this S, if you take the North Pole, there's the North Pole, and this is n-dimensional, uh, so you have a, you have a, you have a frame at that north pole, and that pulls back to give you a normal framing at every point of the surface. Well, then the question is, uh, so now you're looking at bordism classes of these surfaces, because if you take a homotopy, you've got a bordism back here, and so on, there's that whole story. And anyway, you've got this framing hanging around, and it turns out that that normal bundle, there can be you're really looking at, as you go around a circle, you're looking at pi 1 of SON, which is Z mod 2. And so as you go around that circle, there can be a full twist or not. And so, again, it's a, this is, here I was drawing the tangent bundle, but for the normal bundle, there's a full twist or not. And out of that, you get a, uh, an Arfan variant. So the Arfan variant is what he first missed here and then realized it, and so you get the same Z mod 2 as, as we were getting in this situation. I guess not. <laughs> I don't know. I, as I recall, there, there does exist an announcement, you know, Doc Laudy or some, somewhere, that it was zero, and then shortly, I think shortly, it was corrected. I don't know any more of the story than that. Uh, so anyway, so there's, so there's, so now we've, we've, uh, oh, we're up to dimension two with this story. Now then, uh, dimension three, which is in a way dimension four also, uh, oh, you should show, you have a picture of Rock, you have a picture of Rock Lean. Well, that's coming up, so let's, let's get Rock Lean in here. Okay. So Rockline comes in this. He comes in, well, for what another thing is, Rockline was calculating, uh, he was calculating pi n plus 3 of Sn. This, this is sort of the, before the days of all the homotopy theory that really got things going. This is still in the 40s, late 40s for Rockline. And he was calculating this in the same way, looking at, looking, oh, so there he is. Um, so taking a pre-image of a point and getting a three manifold. And then we're working on the Bordism classes of three manifolds. And, you know, every orientable three manifold bounds so that was, whether it bounded or not wasn't the issue, but it has this three-dimensional, or it has a normal bundle. And he knew, so Rockline knew right off that, that there was a Z mod 24 from that homotopy theory of that normal bundle. Uh, but then he, he also made a mistake, and uh, he missed a two. So this is really, it's supposed to be Z mod 48, and the two that he missed is the Rockline invariant, and as I'm going to tell you in a, in a bit, it's the Arf invariant, once again applied to a certain surface inside the 4-manifold. So, so you see, he, he was, the, the pre-image here is a 3-manifold, but now suppose that you have, uh, 
So basically, you're worried about a, a bordism between two or three manifolds, and it's that four-dimensional bordism where uh, something turns up. So. Pardon? I suppose so. Is that the last one you have? No, it's only the last one. It's one more. Oh, there's Carver, yes. Well, I'll have to lower it for you. We'll have to. <laughs> That's a bad affair. Okay. So, Rockleen, uh, so, so his theorem uh, was first sort of stated as saying that if we have a four manifold, uh, which is closed, smooth and spin, then the signature of uh, x is equal to zero to zero mod 16. And that was his theorem. And so I should say that algebra for algebraic reasons, algebra implies uh, congruent to 0 mod 8. So it's this extra 2 that he found that's the interesting thing, and it's the difference between 24 and 48. So uh, so I want to tell you more about the proof of this, give you a proof which uh, I think is sort of the, the right proof. Um, but that'll take a little while, and, and, and I wanted to mention yet one more example of this so I postpone this for a moment, and I'm going to mention uh, Curvier. And the first example, first example of uh, uh, can you try to lower this and just show? Yeah, okay, I'll do that. It's a good picture of Curvier. Andrews, ah, there he is. <laughs> yes. So, I just want to say something briefly about Curvier. So this is around, I don't know, 1959, about, and Curvier produces the first uh, non-smooth uh, manifold. It happens to be of dimension 10. I'm, yeah, yeah, Curvier produces the first non-smooth Manifold of dimension 10. It's a closed manifold. It's piecewise linear, has a piecewise linear structure. Uh, and so how did he do it? Well, he, he plumbed together the tangent disk bundles of two five spheres. So the plumbing goes like this. Here's, this is a S5, and it has a normal bundle, a tangent bundle, which you kind of draw like this. So this is the, uh, this is, that's S5. The fibers here are five-dimensional disks, E5. And, you know, I could put a twist in here, because the bundle isn't trivial. The tangent bundle isn't trivial for the fives here. So it isn't, it isn't quite as simple as it looks. But uh, there's, there's some twisting in here. And then when you plumb, you, you take another, another five sphere, And you, you make it go crosswise. So in here, the the uh, so the the local sections, of the first one, are the are the uh, normal fibers of the second one, and vice versa. So you know, you just you just put them together like this. That's all that happens. So that's plumbing, and you. 
This is Peace Rise in there. You can round the corners if you want. And so there's this construction. And again, there's twisting in here. Well, so all of you know, this, this is fitting the pattern. I mean, this is, the way I've drawn it, instead of five dimensions, I've drawn it just as though it was the surface. Well, the same feature is going on. There are vector space to which we apply the, uh, which is the uh, Z mod 2 vector space, is just the fifth homology. So this is H5 of the plumbing uh, with Z2 coefficients. And so this is just Z2 plus Z2. That's all it is in this case. And now, what's Q? Well, it turns out that, so you have, uh, well, one, one interesting thing, by the way, to say is that the boundary, the boundary of this plumbing is PL homeomorphic, homey to uh, S9. And because it is, you can then cone off the boundary and get a 10-manifold that's closed. Because you can cone off. So that's a separate computation. You just, by then they had the Smales h coordinate theorem, so it's a cal just a calculation that this is a homotopy sphere, and then it's proved to be PL homotopy sphere. So that's one observation. But the other observation that there's something exotic about this is that uh, there's this quadratic enhancement again defined on H5 uh, to Z mod 2. And what it's basically measuring is this. For the surgery theory, well, for this theory, this, this, nor this bundle is stably trivial. So if you add on enough copies of the trivial bundle, you'll get a, you'll get a bundle which is trivial. Remember, the tangent bundle is not, but the stably it is trivial. And now there's an obstruction to reducing that, there's an obstruction to bringing it back down to an actual trivial bundle. And you take that obstruction mod 2, and that's the value of Q on one of these five spheres. And that obstruction turns out to be non-trivial in both cases, so there's an orphan variant. And it's that Arf invariant, or uh, this case is often called the Curvarian invariant, uh, and it's that in, that's the invariant which which gives you the first non-smooth manifold. So it's the same idea is appearing there. So that's all I really have to say about that case. And now I want to talk about Rock Lane for a bit longer. So, okay, so the, so the argument, so why is Rockland's theorem true? Uh, there, there have been various proofs, uh, but this one involves uh, an ARF invariant, which is not, <laughs> by now, in this time of the lecture, not unexpected. Uh, yeah, it reminds me, back here when I was doing the, the knot, I forgot the standard joke that you have to, you have to tell, and those of you who have heard it can groan, and those of you who haven't heard it can still groan. Uh, but the, this involves the the standard, uh, you know, uh, a man and his dog walk into a bar, and he steps up and asks for a drink, and then he mentions to the bartender that his dog is really pretty smart, knows a lot about knot theory, and so the bartender, you know. Rolls his eyes and says, say, yeah, go ahead, ask him a question, ask him a question. So the guy says to the dog, all right, now what's an R, what's a, what's a, if what's an odd invariant? And the dog goes, arf, arf. <laughs> and the bartender rolls his eyes and walks away. <laughs> and then the dog turns to his master and says, should I have said the Alexander polynomial? <laughs> so that's, that's, uh, that's to wake you up for this last bit of the talk. Um, all right, so, 
So to do this, so this is this is the case where it's spin. Suppose it's not spin. So we want to generalize. So if x, well, let f, so surface inside x, be a characteristic characteristic surface. Uh, dual to the second Stiefel Whitney class, which means that uh, there's a there's a spin structure on the complement of F that doesn't extend across F, which means that there exists a spin structure. That's a trivialization of the tangent bundle, as I have up there. Use a spin structure on x minus f, not extending across f. Well, just just imagine ordinary uh, obstruction theory where you're trying to show the manifold spin. So you're you're you you're, you're trying to you each each loop. Or each each uh, on the one sim on one simplices is a smooth manifold, so assume it's, it's triangulated. So on the one simplices, you you pick a framing, pick a framing of the or the or uh, the, on the vertices. It's orientable, so you can do that consistently. So then you extend that across one simplices, and then you try to extend it across two simplices, because in order to be a spin structure. That's got to extend across two simplices somehow. Well, if you come to a two simplex where it doesn't extend, that two simplex has a perpendicular, an orthogonal two simplex. And that two simplex belongs to F. So you, you think in terms of triangulations, the, uh, there's some, there's some bound, there's some two simplices for which the spin structure you've defined on the boundary of that two simplex doesn't extend across it. And so then you puncture it with F, so that you don't have to extend across it. And then it just turns out that you can put these these transverse two simplices together to form a surface. That's a little bit of extra work. So that's how you should picture F. And its char characteristic just means what I just said. It's the obstruction. To the W two is just uh, is a characteristic class which measures. The obstruction to spin structures existing. So, by the way, you have this nice geometric picture. Now, okay. So now let's look at the normal circle bundle to F. So that circle bundle, it's a three manifold, and that circle bundle sits in the complement of F where the manifold is spin. Got a spin structure on the complement of F, so the circle bundle is out in the complement, so it's got a spin structure. So that means that on the circles out there, take any circle out there, uh, it's got a four dimensional trivialization of the tangent bundle over that circle. And so the spin structure on the comp on here on x minus f descends to the circle bundle, uh, which has a spin structure which descends from which descends From that on x minus f. I mean, the circle bundle has a has a trivial normal bundle. It's not surprising it extends it descends like that. That's a three manifold. Or it doesn't really make a difference whether you think of it as a four plane or a three plane bundle. At this, point. so it descends from that on x minus f. So now. 
take a section of the circle bundle over F. So we've got this circle bundle. We take a section of it over the one skeleton. Well, all I'm doing is pushing the one skeleton I mean, I've got I've got F I've got F down here, got the circle bundle around it, and I want to just push the one skeleton of the surface out into the circle bundle. I'll push it out. Well, when you push it out, it gets it inherits a spin structure. I mean it inherits a framing, a trivialization from the way you pushed it out, because there's a trivialization out here. So that gives you a trivialization that gives you something associated with a loop in F. So take a section of the circle bundle. So this gives a trivialization of well, it's a tangent bundle or stabilized. It doesn't doesn't turn out to make any difference. Here's a trivialization. Uh, over the one skeleton of F, and it turns out and it does extend over the two skeleton. You don't, you can't get into any trouble on surfaces with that extension. So now that now we've got on the surface we've got a a trivialization, and so go back up to what I said about. At the very top there, about omega two spins being z mod two. There's two ways to trivialize over the surface. There's the way that, like the Lie group framing or the the non Lie group framings. And so there's a there's a uh, a z two there. I mean there's a you you now look at what you've got on the one skeleton or on the surface f, and so then q of f is is equal to zero or one depending on which on what you get. What you get now? There's a, there's an important point here. This this all looks a little too easy. Well, it is easy, but it's not quite that easy because what happens if you take a different section? So remember, we've got F here, the circle bundle. Well, as you go along the one skeleton in F, you might, as you push out, you might suddenly go around once, which you didn't before. In other words, a different section. Well, the the key point then is that. This is the dual to W two, and because of that reason, if you go around this once, it doesn't change the framing. Because remember, the framing is when you go around this. That was the framing that didn't extend across this disk, to which F was an obstruction. So, so what you, the framing you have on that circle is the like a Lie group framing, and it turns out that when you Change your section and go through, go around that. It doesn't change this value. So that's a little argument. I mean, it's, I, that's not. You, you have to check a little bit there, but it's, it's an easy check. So therefore, this is independent of this section, and so it's a. You've got this quadratic enhancement on F, this characteristic surface, and the Arf invariant of that is Rockling Z mod two. So the way you put that into you sort of put that into uh, the way you put that into uh, a little more formalism. I'll just say a couple of words here and then I'll stop. Um, uh, what you want to do, you want to look at omega four characteristic. So this is four dimensional boardism classes with a characteristic element. That's F, that's surface F. So this is pairs. That's is equal to pairs X comma F. Up to boardism. So this is equal, this, there's a map to Z plus Z and that's an isomorphism. 
So the, the bordism class is where you're keeping this characteristic surface there all along. We have a bordism between two four manifolds, and inside there's a surface and a bordism to this surface. So that there's that. The, uh, the homomorphism is given by the signature, the signature of x. Uh, how shall I write this? So, so it, send, it sends this pair to, to the signature of x. That's the first comment. And then the second one is uh, f dot f, self-intersection of this characteristic surface, minus the signature of x divided by 8. And that's the answer. That's where x, that's what the homomorphism is. And it's an isomorphism because cp2 comma cp1 goes to 1, 0. Signature cp2 is, is uh, is 1, yes. <laughs> and and CP, if you put in CP1, uh, the self-intersection is 1 minus 1 is 0. And then uh, CP2 minus, or connect some, CP2 bar, that's the opposite signature, so that goes to 0, uh, comma, 3 times CP1, connect some, CP1, goes to 1. Uh, this is character. You have to check that these are characteristic, which they are. And this has got self-intersection nine minus one is eight. Signature is zero. Divide by eight is one. So there, there you can just you can sort of you, these are understandable manifolds and, and so on. So there's this isomorphism. And now. Uh, The construction I gave over there, I gave, what I gave over there, that uh, the construction I gave over there was a map to Z mod two. I had a four manifold and I took a characteristic surface, and that that this RF invariant gave me a map to Z mod two. Well, it turns out that that's the same thing as mapping to. You now check that this homomorphism is the same as the homomorphism, which is the second factor here, mod 2. F minus the signature over 8, mod 2. So that's a map to 2 torsion, to Z mod 2. And you just check that these are the same on these two generators. That's all you have to do is check. So these, are, these, are, these maps are equal, and you just check on generators and you find out that this is true. And now, when you've done this, uh, you're done, you have a nice, more, you have a more general formula. So, Rockleen's theorem was that if it was spin, then if it's spin, then the surface is empty, and the uh, signature is always a multiple of 8, so this is 0. Uh, and there is there is no Arf invariant because you're on a sphere which has no you're on the two sphere which has no first homology. Uh, so these this is zero, and right it tells it tells you that this is zero mod two, so it's eight rather than sixteen. That's the that's the point. So it's a, general, it's a generalization of Rockling's theorem, uh, which had been observed already by other people. Uh, so there's a reference. For, if you, you know, these things can be found in general. The reference for this particular stuff is the little book on four manifolds that I wrote. It's a Springer lecture note, so it's in there. The other stuff, the other stuff you, a lot of this you can find on Wikipedia. I was looking at it today. You can find 
a great deal of what I wrote up here is already in Wikipedia. It's, that's, uh, uh, yes, my book has been, my book has been pirated by somebody <laughs> who will who was who was not laughing loud enough. <laughs> okay, I think that's what I have to say. Thank you. Well, since Bon isn't here, um, this um, Kevair example, uh, the boundary of the manifold is a is a sort of exotic dynasty, and that presumably has a mod two spin Kevairism variant, which is in the same route. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Which is the analog shifting in popular history from being a circle to that by nine. Well, on the circle you have two spin structures. And the one of them is a cobordant to zero and the other is not. The one who is not reappears in, in nine as this chap here. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so, uh, oh I didn't say I should I should say one more thing. Namely that uh, Rockland's theorem. This Z mod two that appears in Rockland's theorem. So it's about a four manifold. And there's a yeah, let me let me say let me say another minute. Uh, there's a miss, there's a missing four manifold. There ought to, in every other dimension a multiple of four. In every other one, there's a smooth uh, four manifold with sigma two eight. Sorry, every dimension modular. What am I, what am I, uh, four, my, my four. Plus four. My four is one dimension, which is used in surgery and so on. In dimension four, this doesn't exist because of rock leans there. Now, the, the manifold, uh, it would exist. So this comes back to this, you know, I have, I have say I erased, I erased the truffle a lot, but it has, this has to be, so if you do plus one surgery, on the top one, you get what's called a point for a homology theorem. And so this is a this homology sphere bounds. So this should be simply connected. It's one of the few homology spheres with a finite fundamental the binary custody order on the point. That ought to be zero because this ought to be the actual free sphere. And the, well, the point is that this surgery on the point gray homology here bounds a four manifold of signature eight, just a funny construction on the eight drinking holes. So it bounds something of index eight, but, but it has this boundary. If this boundary were actually a free sphere as it's supposed to be, then you'd have a closed four manifold of signature eight, in which case all manifolds of these. Triangle. They all they all have PL structures. So it's this missing it's this missing four manifold, which ought to be which ought to arise uh, but from the funding construction of the eight diagram, which boundary ought to be the three sphere that is It's that missing manifold that causes the obstruction to triangulating manifolds in higher dimensions. So the theorem there is that uh, M of dimension M or M is greater than equal to five. This has a PL structure, different structure, belonging to the fourth cohomology of M with Z2 coefficient vanishing. And that obstruction, and there's the four, that obstruction wouldn't be there if we had a four manifold of signature eight. You don't have that because there are. That's in there, which is sort of at the very bottom of Barclay's thing. And so it's it's into the influence of the uh, of our goes all the way from not theory to surfaces, to three manifolds, uh, to uh, four manifolds, to Kerbeer's 10 manifold, but also in the PL structures in the old days. So that's a very, very robust. Really, really, you can't get rid of it. <laughs> Uh, this is this, by the way. I'm going to be covering this uh, 